How do you know when you're ready to date again after narcissistic abuse? And what are the warning signs that you're not ready? Well, that's what we're talking about today at queenbeing.com. Let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and we'll just get going. So before I get started, I want to tell you this is not a repeat. I did discuss this recently with Richard Granin, but today we're going to focus on exactly what the warning signs are that you're not ready to date. Plus, we're going to talk about creating deal breakers and raising your standards for future relationships. So. Let's start right here. Take a look. I'm going to share with you four important warning signs that you're just not ready to date yet. Are your friends, your coworkers, and your family trying to sort of push you to date someone new since your last relationship? A new relationship can take a toll on your body and mind, and it's important for your own peace of mind to evaluate your readiness and assess your ability to handle dating again after narcissistic abuse. You don't have to jump into the dating pool if you're not ready. Consider these signs that you're just not ready to form a new romantic relationship yet. First of all, you're not over your ex, toxic or otherwise. If you still dwell on your past relationship and you can't stop thinking about the ex, you're definitely not ready. If your mind is preoccupied with thoughts about your previous partner, you're not ready. The inability to concentrate on a new person, it can totally negatively affect your dates and hurt your reputation. If you find yourself constantly comparing your new date to any ex then it's and it's interfering with your happiness, well, this is another sign you just need to wait. The emotional baggage of your past relationships, it can hurt your dating style. It can prevent you from noticing the positive aspects of a new partner. It can even make you dull and sullen on dates. Be emotionally ready to move on from your ex before you jump back into dating again. Another thing is if you suffer from an addiction, if you have an addiction to drugs, alcohol, prescription pills, or anything else, remember that an addiction can have a dramatic impact on a new relationship. Even if you're upfront about it, your new partner might not be able to handle it. You're putting the entire relationship at risk. Addictions can add a tremendous amount of tension and stress to any new relationship. They can make it difficult to focus on the positive aspects of dating. And yeah, this includes addiction to your narcissist. Before you start dating, make sure you've dealt with your addiction and that you're in active recovery. The, another one is that you can't share. Do you struggle with either personal or emotional sharing? If you have trouble discussing your feelings, dating is harder. Sharing can also take the form of giving your time or other things to another person. If you have issues with sharing your food with another person or are troubled by the idea of sharing your space or home with a new partner eventually, make sure that you take some time to think about what it is that's bothering you before you go on a date. You have to try to resolve any challenges that make you wary of sharing. Another one is your deep dark secrets. It is totally normal to have a few secrets in any relationship, but if you have deep secrets that affect you on a serious level, well, the new relationships need to wait until you resolve these issues in, as well. If you have a dangerous secret you're hiding from the world, like a new partner might not be able to handle the dark secrets, and it could cost you the relationship, or more honestly, it, it could make your life harder when it comes to dealing with your toxic ex. Before you date again, examine your personal life. Make sure that you're prepared for the consequences of this person discovering your secrets. We all know dating again is a real challenge and it's really important to be emotionally and physically prepared before you do it. So what do you think about that? Can you think of any additional warning signs about being ready to date that I didn't list here or not being ready to date? If so, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you check out the links in the cards above and in the description below if you're looking for more information about dating and recovery from narcissistic abuse. If you think you're ready to date now or you're planning to date in the near future, this is really important for you. The first thing you need to understand is that you've got to come up with some standards. You have to raise your standards right up so that you don't fall into another narcissistic mess like you did last time. Don't think I'm judging you, I did the same thing. Now, with all of that being said, I'm gonna share with you some information about how to set up your own deal breakers so that you know exactly what your standards are and what things will cause you to just walk away with not a single second discussion. Bear with me, take a look. If you've been in a toxic relationship with a narcissist, the abuse you've experienced has left you damaged and maybe unsure of what you really want in a relationship anyway. Personally, I have a few basic deal breakers for any relationship, including my current marriage. And as you might know, they are as follows. Number one, don't hit me or intentionally hurt me physically. Number two, do not cheat on me. And number three, don't hurt my kids. That one and the verbal abuse were admittedly added later. It might surprise you to know that when it comes to deal breakers with dating, 
men and women are surprisingly alike in what turns them off and on what won't lead to more dates when we're talking about healthy people. Knowing this can help you avoid a dry spell and or, you know, if you're willing to raise your own standards, it can also help you avoid getting stuck with a narcissist again. So now that you've seen that, I'll tell you this. The deal in my marriage is, and this is how I would react in any relationship, is I have certain deal breakers, which I just explained to you. Well, almost anything else in that relationship could be discussed, right? If, if something happened and I wasn't happy about it, I'm not saying that means I would stay for anything else. I'm saying I'm not even going to talk about those things with that person. If those three deal breakers are broken, <laughs> are, are committed in my relationship, then it's over, no discussion. And that is even true today in my current relationship, which is going on 16 years now. So if you're thinking about setting up some deal breakers for yourself, what are you thinking about setting up? What things are most important to you that you could set them up as a deal breaker in your relationship? Share your thoughts and your ideas in the comments below. So now that we're talking about raising our standards, let's talk about what things we want to watch for if we do decide we're ready to date again. So take a look at this. So what kinds of issues are red flags for potential future mates? Well, of course, the insta-love factor. If your date declares their love too fast, big red flag. Narcissists are known to jump in too fast. Watch for signs that your date likes to be in control. A little bit of control, no big deal. But if you're out with someone who needs to order for you or someone who otherwise needs to take away from your voice, be concerned. How does your date treat people around them? A nice person is going to be nice to everybody, even the waiter who screwed up their order. But if your date flies off the handle a little bit too quickly, you should probably step back. Does your date make eye contact with you or are they always looking around the room? Not being able to look you in the eye is a bad sign. It could mean that they're shy, but it might also mean, if coupled with other things, that they are bored, insensitive, or even scoping out other people, none of which is a good sign for you if you're on a first or second date. If your date can't laugh at themselves, it's yet another sign of someone who's insecure. Look, nobody likes to look foolish or get laughed at. It takes a person who's very comfortable in their own skin to accept this type of situation gracefully. But if your date just seems to go over the top, well, they might not have only self-esteem issues, but also anger management issues as well. It's a bad combination. In order to avoid getting into an abusive dating situation, you have to forget about the idea of putting your date on a pedestal. Try to see them for who they really are flaws and all. That way, you'll be less likely to be taken off guard. And hey, if you do hit it off, you'll know that you love who they really are and not just who you want them to be. All right, now this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, how do you feel about dating? Have you already started dating or are you still kind of thinking about it or you know we're near ready? Share your, your thoughts, your ideas, and your experiences in the comments section below, and let's talk about it. All right, that's all I've got for you right now. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life, and hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot, take it now, and the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.